Hey guys, this is Charlotte, and you're watching Going In Raw. What's up, it's your girl Sasha Banks, Legit Fox, and you are watching Going In Raw. You like that? What's up? This is the most must see WWE superstar of all time and his lovely, gorgeous wife. Marie. And you are going in SmackDown Live. This Ugh. is the glorious one, Bobby Roode, and you're watching Going In Raw. Hey, Brendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Steve and Larson, available wherever fine podcasts are. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and the little notify bell next to it to make sure you're always getting your new Going In Raw content. Be sure to tell your friends all about Going In Raw, too. Why are you so... What's going on over there? What's happening did over we, there? Did you switch chairs with me? Because your chair used to be the squeaky one, and now mine's super squeaky. If I did, it was when we moved into office, and I did it There's without... There's a to tell because there was a stain on my chair. And if I, and if I did, I didn't realize. You get, there was a stain on your chair? You want me to check my chair right yeah, now? Yeah, not right now. We can just tighten up your chair a little Let's later wait on. wait till the post show and see which chair has stain on it. It might be mine. I don't know. It could be. I mean, I, look, I just figure if there's a stain, I, I was involved in it. No, I dropped food on it. Oh, okay. Is that what you're going to say? Um, we're also available uh, on every fine podcast app there is. Check out the CastBox podcast app. It's a terrific way to get your podcasts. Uh, we're also available, of course, on the Apple iOS podcast app. Uh, it really is a fantastic way to get your podcasts. Uh, and, of course, wherever else. Uh, if you if you're if you're still having problems with Google Play or iHeartRadio, no, no Google Play or Spotify, it should still be uploading there. There are new links, so just research going in raw. It's the one titled "Just Going in Raw," and I think it they usually says it says something like Castbox Original or something like that. So we're there, we are there. Yes, um, you just have outdated info. You have the outdated links right there. Uh, we're also available on the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. It's a great way, a fantastic way to support going in raw. You kick us some money and hey, guess what? In exchange, we give you something back. Yeah. Uh, either access to live streams, access to our going in raw discord group. It's a really fun group um, to be a part of. It's a great little community. Yes. And uh, or the Frendo care package for 20 bucks, only a one time $20 payment. Gets you the Friendo Care Package, a comic book, stickers, a poster, and a postcard. A couple of those things are signed by us. Um, it's really cool. And uh, I've got, so like March and April, I have like a big giant batch of just already done. They're already finished, uh, ready to go. I just have to dump them in the big mailbox thing at the post office. Uh, and then and those will be on their way. Um, so it's a matter of that. And I have like a couple more from April that I have to do still. This is strange. Breaking news from Larson right now. What's well, going no, on I'm, 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 at the I'm news here desk? On the uh, Wrestling, Observer, uh, Wrestling Observer website. Dave Meltzer, yes. Yeah, and apparently Styles and Nakamura are going to have a match tonight, non title match. To determine what the stipulation is going to be for their title match. Yeah. That's weird. Uh, I got that on. Uh, AJ told me that on, on the Instagram yeah. WWE shop of all places. I mean, they can't have anybody win that match because. So far, no one's won. I mean, since Nakamura's tor- turned heel, no one's won a match. Um, you know, it's double count out, yeah. and then the double count out again, essentially. Yeah. So, well, like somebody if, will win that. If they're going to have someone win this, it's yeah. going to be weird. You think so? Instead of having a, 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 a winner at the actual title match. Yeah. It seems weird. What did I tell you earlier today, man? What do we review? On a daily basis, we review the mad ramblings. Of a 72-year-old man. I know. know. How old Vince is now. (laughs) 70-something. None of them makes sense. It seems strange to me. Ronda Rousey. So what was it according to you? Can you pull that up, the story about Ronda Rousey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. Nia versus uh, Rousey, uh, according to, I think it was WrestleVote. That sounds right. I'll pull it up here. Pull it up. In the meantime, I'll mention that we're also at uh, Pro Pro Wrestling Tees. Forward slash going in raw. The I find it funny shirt is right there right now available for you. Um, I almost won, wore my fun wrestling shirt today, but I got hey, taste on it. When I was brushing one thing that, that would be fun. If we're ever announced, if, we're, if it's ever confirmed that we're going to be at StarCast, mm-hmm. wink, wink, right? Should we do a StarCast exclusive t-shirt to sell? We're going to do that. And then the leftovers we can sell on website somewhere. I think that'd be a lot of fun. That'd be cool. What, what do you got for me? Um, this is what Russell Vote said. Quote, asked about the Ronda Rousey versus Nia Jax rumors happening at Money in the Bank and not SummerSlam, was told, quote, if they are true, it's because they can't ignore Rousey for another pay-per-view, don't want her in the ladder match, 
and can't have her lose a qualifying match. They had no choice. That's not true at all. See, they were setting up a storyline with Ronda, Natalia, and Mickey James. There's a storyline there. <laughs> Why not just do that? I'm telling you, man, the mad rambler. It always cracks me up when the reason is we don't know what else to do. So we're just going to do this. Instead of having like a really long, great build to it, they did it on the red carpet. The challenge was issued in supremely awkward fashion on the red carpet. I know. Uh, for the upfronts. <laughs> and if you don't know what an upfront is, it doesn't matter. It's media stuff. It's media advertising stuff. It doesn't matter. It's an event that really, unless you're in the TV industry, doesn't matter. <laughs> but that's something to talk about today on our show because that yeah, was... actually showed footage of the, uh, the entrances to this upfront. The moment the mm-hmm. challenge was issued yeah. is documented on videotape. Yeah, the problem is, though, uh, Nia Jax is just, she seems, she comes off as, like, too sweet of a person to really, like, this whole thing, it felt more like, I don't know, a book club than, well, like, a it, wrestling challenge. the challenge was issued and uh, Rousey accepted it, and it was all very cordial afterwards. They, it they was left, super cordial. They left, like, like Charlotte had her yeah. like, arms around each of them, yeah. and they were all laughing and having a good time. <laughs> So it seemed like, all right, we have this obligation. We have to get out of the way. And yeah. The and then we can, discuss, we can discuss the and latest can, Fifty Shades book. Whatever, yeah. <laughs> we can go into the, this up front and, and joke around Yeah. Uh, once cameras are off. They weren't waiting until the cameras were off. They well, were okay, still they, doing it. They were it. waiting until their backs were turned to camera. Okay. And then they started joking around. Anyways, um, so wait. So did the... Did, did, I forget. Didn't they do that at the head of the show? They teased it. Oh, okay. They teased it, and then That's they did they it after the, the Rollins episode. thing. Okay, it, okay. Yeah. So, um, so they teased it and said, you know, here at the exciting NBC Universal Upfront Media presentation, um, exciting breaking news um, coming up later on. Mm-hmm. Find out what it is. Huge surprise, shocking challenge. Yeah, not really. Uh, oh, I we got to mention this real quick. Therith Abad is doing a thing in the Friendover. So we have. The, the Friendo Discord group, which is like for $1 and up pages, $1 you get in. And then we've got the, the closed Friendoverse group, which yeah. you have to answer some going in raw questions in order to get in. Prove your bona fides. The, the, exactly. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because here in Patreon chat, there the bot is bringing up a good point. Uh, they are doing um, some sort of raffle thing. Uh, so they need to get to a certain dollar amount, I guess. They're going to raffle off an all-in ticket. Or tickets. I don't really know. If you want more information, go to the friend of... I thought I had it right in the episode. I have no idea. And then Mikey Omega said, actually, we're doing this. Just if if you're a member, go look into it. If you're not, apply, then go The Friendoverse Facebook group. Just just get on Facebook, search the Friendoverse, and then see if you can get in the group, and you might have a chance at getting an all-in ticket. Yeah. Some sort of raffle is happening there. I'm not entirely sure uh, what that's all about, uh, but it sounds awesome because they're good people. So there you go. There's my there's my shout out. Uh, so yeah, but it opened up with the chorus of boos. Oh yeah, for from, Roman Reigns from the good people of uh, London. London. Where yeah. is this coming? What what was O two O two O two in London? Yeah, um, and always a lively crowd. My yes. problem my problem usually with these shows is not enough happens. Not enough happens, but I felt like last night, if we, if we take a look at the show in a bubble, I was actually really entertained by the oh, show yeah, last yeah, night. Yeah. I thought plenty of stuff happened. I, th- I think for me, maybe it's because they're they're doing the Money in the Bank build, I think, a little sooner yeah. than they did last year. Well, yeah, and it seemed like a lot of the matches that were going down were of consequence. Mm-hmm, yeah. You know, and even the ones that weren't, they tried to get some storyline involvement going on with it. Yeah. Um, so they mattered. Right, exactly. Um, one man who definitely matters is Roman Reigns. He came well, out to a chorus of boos. That's what we've been told. Yeah, that's well, what they, they, tells us. they really want us to think that he matters. Yeah. I would get the, the whiteboard out there, but I don't, I don't have, I don't know if I have this, if you want to grab it. Well, I mean, unless we have something planned for it, I don't want to do it every week just to do it. Well, we need to know every week where Roman stands as the yeah, guy. Pretty much the same as last week. Um, well, there's been more. He tweeted this week, and we didn't put that on the whiteboard. He tweeted that it was his hashtag my yard. But that's status quo in his mind. Right. Nothing's changing. All right. Mind. Well, if you don't want look, people like the whiteboard. Man. I know, I know, but I want to do it too much because then right. it's not as funny. Right. Last week was a perfect opportunity because it felt like things had happened. We he was inter- he was put into a new feud with put gender. Put gender through a wall. 
It wasn't a real wall. They set up some drywall. There. Yeah, but it's like a real feud now, and it's firmly in, it's it's firmly taken him out of the universal title because, equation. Oh, we expected before. Well, that's hold on. It's firmly taken him out of the universal title picture for now because Brock's not defending the title till SummerSlam. Can we just can we just and can, I, can I just state that I'm trying to right give there. the people what they want? And that's all right there. And, you, and you're poo pooing. I'm not saying there's really nothing new to add. All it's right. all right there in the whiteboard. I'm trying. He's the gatekeeper. Whiteboard's over there. I can't get past. I want to keep the whiteboard a special thing. If we do it every week, it's not going to be special it's anymore. Very special. Anyways, uh, he comes out and he calls out gender. And what does he say, Larson? He, he says, says, "Come out here and be more relevant than you've ever been." Gender was like question. A, was isn't WWE being t- WWE champion for six months? Did Roman ever hold a WWE title for six months? No, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no, he did. He won at Mania and then dropped it at um, uh, Money in the Bank. Yeah, yeah. Because he uh, had a wellness policy violation. Yeah, so gender beats out Roman in like a couple different areas, I think, yeah. in terms yeah. of relevancy. Yeah. Um, no, this was fascinating because it all served. See what, see, what I'm thinking they're doing, this is very clever. Very clever. They're using the most hated guy in the country. This is why the whiteboard is so great. If, they're you, using, have, if you have something in mind, go grab it. They're using the most hated guy in the company, Roman Reigns, to turn gender a face. face. I know. And to make him the biggest face in the company. That's what they're doing. I don't think that's what they're doing. I'm pretty sure because that's what they're accomplishing. The the way they're shoehorning this WWE management doesn't like Roman storyline now into everything. Mm -hmm. Like Kurt Angle suddenly is just a a corporate uh, yes man. Mm -hmm. Even though at WrestleMania, he got himself in that match because he was running his mouth in front of uh, Triple H and Stephanie. Yeah. And he won that match. Yeah. Or his team won that match. So there was never a moment where Stephanie confronted him and said... You know, see, this is what happens when you run your mouth and make us look bad. Yeah. That moment never happened. There's no motivation for him to suddenly be to say, well, this is what's best for business. There's no motivation for it. Mm-hmm. There's zero motivation for it for Curry. Yeah. doesn't make any sense. Yeah, no. They're just trying to use this horrible attempt to get Roman over. Here's the thing, though. Using this Daniel Bryan template is terrible. The thing is, yeah, no, if, if, there's, any, if there's any semblance of truth to that, it's that's that's even worse than I thought it was that than I thought it was. I know. Um, and you're getting a lot of heel heat on this whiteboard thing, dude. Uh, uh, Alex C saying, you know, let the whiteboard feel organic. Oh, get it. You feel organic. Get out of here with that. Anyways. Uh, yeah. Kurt. Here's the thing about Kurt Angle, though. Here's the one consistent thing about Kurt Angle. He's never been good at his job. He's always been really bad at his job. So the lack of consistency is actually kind of consistent for him at his no, job. Like it, this is this is a huge shift for Kurt. So I feel like it, we need at least one uh, segment backstage with Stephanie where <clears throat> she really says, you need this job right. She's at Upfronts, dude. She ain't doing this. I didn't say it had happened tonight. Oh. But she really needs to put him, <clears throat> put him through the ringer and let him know, hey, if you don't do what I say, oh... Ooh. Yeah. You're going to be out of a job. Well, he didn't he get like an email? I thought he got an email. Didn't Kevin Owens yeah, say he got email's an email? Yeah, email is not really an a, a interesting dramatic device in terms of wrestling. Um, well, didn't they? I mean, they, Kurt they, looking at his phone being like. <sighs> hold on a second. They had an entire general manager who, uh, the, the, anon, the raw anonymous gen, yeah, general yeah, manager. Yeah, how'd that work? Um, well, it worked for a very long time, uh, you know. Anyways. Well, I mean, it was implemented for a long time. Yeah, didn't they did it, it for a long time. Didn't mean it worked. Uh, let's see here. So yeah, no more money in the bank qualifying opportunities for Roman. The crowd cheered very oh, yeah. loudly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Roman, that was, that was that was from on high. That was from uh, WWE management. Yeah, exactly. That wasn't Kurt's decision. He made a point of saying he he passed the buck, mm-hmm. the chain of command. He's not a good general to the front manager. office saying this is from you know the board of directors, whatever. No more uh, qualifying opportunities. For Roman Reigns. Right, yeah, but Roman really wants gender, so he goes backstage, Search finds him, finds him. Gender literally throws Sunil Singh into Roman Reigns, who obviously quickly dispatches of well, him. Well, then Gender threw a garbage can on Roman, too. Yeah. He uh, worked him over pretty good. Yeah, he did, bit. and the and crowd then, was super into it. They then, liked it Yeah, yeah. when Gender was lol, beating up Roman. Roman wins. Uh, well, yeah, because, you know. They start brawling. Because that's, look, how else are they going to get gender over unless he goes through oh, the struggle? Underdog. Underdog. Yeah, underdog. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah. That's a good point. I thought about that. <laughs> exactly. This whole thing, I'm telling you, man. Uh, next up, we had what we figured to be the main event, but it was still, it was what we figured it would be anyways. A long match that was really a long, good. long, really good match. Yeah, it was fantastic. Um, Seth Rollins versus Kevin Owens. Uh, Rollins went over with a stomp. There's all sorts of cool stuff. There's the, what, mm-hmm. the Falcon Arrow on the apron. That, oh, was, that was cool. Great. That was and neat. Then, and then Owens re- reversed um 
Seth's superplex attempt into his like fisherman's perfect plex yeah. off the second rope. And then that the, the implementation of the stomp was different. I hadn't seen that before where Owens was getting back in the ring mm-hmm. and Rollins gathered himself enough to deliver a stomp and get the win. I like the suicide dive into onto Kevin Owens' shoulder. Mm-hmm. That was or onto his into into Oh yeah, 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 uh, yeah. The, the fireman's, fireman's carry, carry position. yeah, position. Yeah, exactly. I thought that was real cool. There was a lot of really cool stuff going on in this match. It was really fantastic. I mean, it's I love when they just have two guys who you know can put on five star matches. Yep. Just go out there and do whatever on a raw for thirty minutes. Yep. It's fantastic. Yep. Great way to spend my time. Yes. Next up, we were uh, at the upfronts in, was this in New York? Yeah. Really? Your shit's blown up. Um, yeah, it was in New York. Yeah. At, uh, Radio City Music Hall, I believe. Oh, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. And NBC. then we get, we saw footage of the challenge. So, uh, Rhonda's giving an interview with uh, Kathy Kelly, I believe, mm-hmm. and uh, talking about, you know, WrestleMania, and she's saying, I get, you know, that was the past. I put that behind me. More opportunities in front of me, and then Nia Jax walks up with the women's title and says, but can you be this? Mm-hmm. And Ronda seems confused. Can you, and then Nia said, can you be Raw Women's Champion? Yeah. I'm challenging you to a match at Money in the Bank. And Ronda seemed hesitant at first, like she was jumping to the front of the line. She said, there's a lot of other people who deserve that opportunity. Yeah. I just got here. I'm still paying my dues. And then Charlotte from off camera goes, do it. That was really cute. Yeah. That was supremely cute. Do it. Yeah, come do it. She, was, she, she said, do it. Yeah. Do it. And then she said, okay, I'll do it. And then Nia Jax, big smile on her face. Okay, great. <laughs> and, and then Charlotte woos. Then Charlotte comes in the middle of them, puts her arms around him. And what did she say? She said something like, this is real or no, something like that. No, she woos. She goes, woo. Yeah, I know, but she said something else. Yeah, she said, she woo. Said. Oh, I think, no, I think she said, that's going to be woo. <laughs> something like something, that. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways. And I, then they all walked off together. Charlotte was the most charming aspect about this, but the whole damn thing was very charming. It was just charming in a book club way. It wasn't charming in a, you know, Rainmaker, I want your title way. Um, but still, I don't know. I couldn't help but kind of smile through the whole thing. Yeah. Know? It was like equal parts cringy and charming at the same time. It yeah. was weird. Because with the freaking upfronts. Come on now. Yeah, I know. Why, why not, like, shoot this? If you're not going to do it live, I get that because you're in a different country. Mm-hmm. And I assume that's something you, you – well, I mean, yeah, that happened earlier yesterday. Like, yeah. We knew what that happened – before they even started shooting Raw. So yeah. if they want to avoid spoilers, I don't know. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Oh, I don't know. Um, in any event, next up we had Kurt Angle backstage. Uh, and uh, he was approached by, yeah, he was on the phone to somebody saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ronda Rousey, Money in the Bank. Wow, great. Anyways. I mean, uh, he was just hearing about it. Curtis, <laughs> yeah. Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas approached him. Um, and they are now known as, he said, uh, Bo Dallas wanted to call their group the A Team. Yeah, the Kurt, Kurt Angle says, said. Well, hold on, you know, there's a TV show called that as well as a movie. You can't call yeah. your, your your team that. And then he said, "Well, then we're the B Team." And both Curtis Axel and Kurt Angle said, "That's a terrible name." And then Bo Dallas said, "No, because B stands for best." Yeah, that was great. We're the best team. And Curtis Axel immediately loved it. Kurt Angle was still, "That's ridiculous." They wanted a title shot. Yeah, they, he said no because he didn't want a match. And they said, well, no, hold on. The Miz Taraj has never won a match, but the B team is undefeated. Exactly. And so Kurt granted them a match, not a title match, but a match nonetheless later on in the evening. They have a, a Heath Slater Rhino chance of winning those titles. Yeah. That might actually happen. It could. Um, but, you know, they're never going to be like, you know, but I, I'm going to enjoy it while it's around. Oh, yeah. Because it'll be a year. It'll be a year. Then yeah, it'll be around fun. like that. It'll be fine. Uh, Next, we had a qualifier from Money in the Bank. No Way Jose versus Baron Corbin hey. versus Bob Roode. I like that when you say his name, you don't say it as pronounced as you used to, and you sing it a little bit. Baron Corbin. <laughs> Nobody's going to ever chant that, dude. Baron Corbin. I'll chant my own name. Baron Corbin. Uh, anyways, this went down the way I figured it would. Yeah. No Way Jose. Boy, he re- he comes out with a... Head full of steam on that conga thought, line I, these days. I thought he had a pretty good showing in this match. It's intense. Well, yeah. I'm just talking about the conga line. No, I know, line. but the match itself, I thought he, uh, he he did pretty well. Who said this? One of our friendos, I think, said, how amazing would a No Way Jose cash-in be if he comes out oh, with I the know. conga oh, line? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah I read that it. somewhere on Twitter, and I totally forget who said it, but it'd be great. 
Uh, let's see here. Anyways, yeah, this kind of went down the way we figured it would. There's some heat between Baron and, and No Way Jose, mm-hmm. and that ended up leading to Bob Roode getting the glorious DDT on No Way Jose while Baron Corbin was still recovering on the outside of the ring. He got the pin on No Way Jose. So Bob Roode moves on. Money in the bank. Money he in will the be bank. In the men's ladder match he along with Finn, Braun, Rusev, Rusev, Miz. Yes. And we'd add one more name to that list by the end of the night. Yes. Next, Kurt Angle's backstage. Kevin Owens walks in. Kevin wants, uh, uh, he said he was screwed out of the Intercontinental title. He wants another match. He wants an opportunity to get the money in the bank. Kurt says, no. Kevin Owens says, I can call Stephanie. And he gets his phone. He produces his phone and says, I can do it right now. Mm-hmm, yeah. And Kurt Angle says, worry about that later. He walks in the trainer's room. Um, and Jinder is getting some rib tape applied to his midsection. You kind of have to appreciate the goodfellas ask single take. Yeah, no. From from scene to scene here. I, I do appreciate that. Usually <laughs> they don't they don't do things this right, way. Right, exactly. I just re- I wish the entire thing had like a, a West Wing Sorkin esque like walking shot. Yes. And then it moves into Yeah, like every backstage segment has multiple aspects to it. They just <laughs> yeah. go from scene to scene. Right, all exactly. In one yeah. yeah. That's fantastic. Then you know the pressure is on, gotta perform because you gotta like think about this. Gender's sitting back there waiting for for Kurt to come in. I know. And it's like, this is all live. It's one thing to go live when you're just sort of standing there. Okay, let me read my lines. But you're anticipating it. I know. Then they walk in with the camera guy or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of cool. It is cool. I, I like it. it. Yeah. I like it a lot more. Anyways, Ginger's in there. He's a million bucks. He's got uh, rib tape on. Yeah. Because, you know, he's being tended to after his uh, underdog beat down by, uh, you know, Roman Reigns. Yes. Heel Roman Reigns. The nefarious Reigns. heel Roman mm-hmm. Reigns. Exactly. And your underdog hero uh, Jinder Mahal is back there with training staff. Um, and, uh, Kurt's like, sorry, man, your, your match has to, no way. That what? was later on. Yeah. Okay. He that, was, that was later this, on. At this point he was saying, Jinder, are you, can you go? Mm-hmm. And Jinder was like, mm-hmm. there you go. Showing fortitude, fortitude, a true face. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Next, the B team, formerly known as the Miz Taraj, taking on Breezango. Yeah. Um, they already had their own merch. They had a t-shirt with the letter B on it. I always appreciate seeing Fandango when he's in England because that's the crowd that does the do do do. Yeah, yeah. And so he gets he has a little extra, you know, wind in his sails too. Um, but yeah, no, the B team. This was fantastic. This was fantastic because you kind of saw this coming a little bit. But the um, the legitimate number one there that that finish was pretty cool. Yeah, the B team one with their what. It was like a belly to back with a neck breaker. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty crisp. It was good. They, they There was a couple like really cool little tag team things mm-hmm, they did mm-hmm. that was like, holy crap. They are actually, I mean, you know, they've been to Miz for a while. Yeah. But it was pretty crisp. I yeah. It was a good match. And yeah. Breezango, decent wrestler. Oh, they're, yeah, they're yeah. really good wrestlers. Um, so when it was at, like when they got the win, they were both completely stunned. Mm-hmm. They were floored. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. Oh, and the crowd fantastic. was super into it. Oh, yeah. And uh, this is the perfect crowd to have them. Yeah, for sure. Win. Yeah. And like, I don't know. It just legitimately seemed like these two guys were happy to be out of the Miz's shadow. Yeah. Because these were two guys that, you know, I think WWE had sort of big plans for them. They probably felt that they were going to be a bit bigger than they ended up being. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, both for Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel. So that finish was fantastic. And afterwards, uh, they gave an interview where they said they are undefeated. Yeah. They are the B team. Yes. And I think they're probably going to be undefeated for, for a, a while. while. Yeah. yeah. That's always great. Yes. Next, another Money in the Bank qual. Oh, no, it's not. Sorry. Jumped ahead. Uh, next, Sasha Banks, Natalia, and Ember Moon took on the Riot Squad. Yeah. Um, this was fine. Yeah. I love. I like Ember Moon a lot. She's so good. She's so good in the ring. She's really good in the ring. Um, so, yeah, anyways, uh, Liv Morgan ended up tapping out to the sharpshooter. I don't remember a lot of this match, to be honest with you. Sasha was in it a lot. <laughs> yeah, I kind of um, remember that. There was an awesome suicide dive from Ember Moon. Sasha kind of had checked out look on her face. I wonder if, besides Charlotte, of the four horsewomen are like, man, we should really kind of be like all at the top right now. Mm-hmm. And they're not, well, especially know, with, with what happened later with the with the signing of or with Marina Schaefer and Jessamyn Duke. Yeah, that's going to be a special center. attraction match. Yeah, that match will happen. Yeah, we'll get four horsemen versus four horsemen, and that'll be a huge 
Huge stage, huge stage for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Next, a Dolph and Drew iPhone promo. That Dolph was sort of hovering towards like the, because Drew is so huge. Yeah, he's massive. And Dolph is not. No. And Drew is the guy holding the phone eight feet in the air, and Dolph's little head is down there. Anyways, Drew is great. Oh, he's fantastic. Yeah, isn't he? He's, yeah, he's I loved amazing. all his trash talk during the the second to last match of the tag match. Oh, I know it was great. Man, he's so good. He's he's like he's jacked physically, but also spiritually, he's jacked. Yeah, you know what I mean, I know he gets in there. Oh, big man! I've been waiting for this big I know, man. I know, and it's, it's it's pretty impressive how he managed to flip the switch from like lovable face in NXT. Oh, I know. And now this kind of, I mean, I hesitate to call him a heel because I don't think they're really cheat. Yeah, no, he's but just he's got an edge to him. He's now. got an edge to him. Exactly. And it's great. No, it's awesome. It's great. I just still like, you know, he's with Dolph. I, you know, I'll, I'll say this Dolph being into it. It helps a lot. It does help a lot. Cause if he was, if he were checked out, well, there's two things Dolph's into it and they're not, they're not putting Dolph at the front. Right, yeah. So much. Yeah, at, yeah, 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 at yeah. At least they're equals, but I feel like, especially when it comes to the promos and stuff, Drew is the one that's getting most of the, the mic time. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Uh, next up, we had, uh, oh, say yeah. Yeah. Say no. I, oh, I, by the way, I need to start watching the main event. If the Revival are, are a staple of main event, because we're not going to get them on Raw. We got this match right here. Just It was just it was just by the books. Uh, Woken Matt. The revival can do so much more. I know. And I wonder if they do on main event. I want to see them on main event. Yeah. My sir, when does that show drop? When does that actually come out? Like You're Thursday? The wrong guy. Probably Thursday. Probably Thursday. Because it's the day that nothing else comes yeah. out. So I might check that out. Well, I think Kurt Hawkins is on main event too. Yeah, man. Probably a lot of good stuff on me. There's too much be. good talent. Could be. Anyways. It's probably mostly recaps from like one or two matches though. Yeah, probably. That's how it's always been. Well, I can just be a dick on my computer. I was looking for shoes last night on my computer. Oh, what are you going to get? Um, help me out here. They they have like a couple different uh, color variations, uh, Jordan ninety one retro some crap, fly flight ninety one. All right, we'll talk about something. Later. They look really cool. All right. Anyways, I want to. There's one that's like white with um, sort of teal blue mm. accents to it. Mm. Powder ta- powder teal. Oh yeah. Blue. Yeah. Accents. Yeah, that's a good color. Magnifico. You should get some ultra boosts. I don't want to get those. They're super comfy. I'm sure they are. I'm sure the Jordans are probably comfy too. I don't know if they're ultra boost comfy. We're going to be walking around a lot in Chicago. You'll be. I'm not going to wear them to Chicago, man. They're just for the office. They're oh, for right. here. What are you going to wear to Chicago then? Oh, I'll get some new walking shoes. You should get some ultra boost. Probably Lunars. I like Lunars. That's what I'm, that's what I'm sticking with. Right. I've had Lunars too, but for walking around. Everyday walking. It's all about the boost, man. All right, man. All right. Can we just move on? You're the one that brought up shoes. What happened next? I don't know. Where were we? Oh, um, next. Bailey and Sasha had a brief interaction backstage mm-hmm. <clears throat> where uh, Sasha said she just told Bailey, good luck in your match tonight. That's literally all she said. And Bailey said, thank you, and walked on. Thanks, Sasha. Thanks, Sasha. Yeah. Good luck getting pinned tonight against Alexa Bliss. After that, Sami Zayn came out, dropped the promo, saying this that he, good, had, man. he had done some investigating on the old Facebook mm-hmm. and found out that Bobby Lashley – uh, the description of his relationship with his sisters or his sisters wasn't exactly as he, he, he said. He portrayed it, yeah. Yeah, so he was going to bring uh, Bobby Lashley's sisters to Raw next week. Yeah. All right. This could either be really bad oh, yeah. or fairly entertaining if they minimize the sister aspect There's of it. There's zero middle ground, though. <laughs> It's either going to be an absolute... Ah, you're it's right. either going to be an absolute train <laughs> you're wreck. You're right, yeah. You're right. Or or it's going to be pretty entertaining. But there's zero middle ground. You're right. Yeah. Zero middle ground. There. Yeah. And wh- of course, which side are you going to err on? Which side do you train think? Wreck. Train wreck. I'm going into it expecting absolute train wreck. But it's Sami Zayn. I know. He, he can make performance was good last he, night. He, he was, was great. Pulled out his doctor's note saying he had vertigo. <clears throat> you know, put on the reading glasses again. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I'm not expecting much from this. I'm gonna. I'm and gonna I say. I feel bad for Sami Zayn. Like I understand. I'm, it's good they're giving Lashley. You feel bad for Sami Zayn? He's in a program gonna, with Lashley I don't right know now. That he's gonna lose. Oh, it's this is fine though. I think this is good for him. Well, he's on TV. Well, he was on TV before, and he's doing good work. He's doing good work. Good work before. Yeah, uh, when he was when when they had him doing board. Look, I guarantee you, he'd rather be 
in a program as a heel with a hot face Bobby Lashley just returning than what he was doing before he turned right but like in the months Wait, what did you say about Bobby, Bobby Lashley? With a returning Bobby with a, with a returning Bobby Lashley. Okay, uh, okay, okay. He'd much rather be where he is now than he was right before did he hear, turned did heel. You hear Lashley getting booed last night in the main event? Was he really? Yeah, cuz he wasn't Elias. Oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah, whenever he had the upper hand, there was booze, especially when he came at the expense of Elias. Oh, well, people love Elias, man. They do. They're going to have to turn him eventually, and then it'll be boring. Yeah, unfortunately. Are you going to watch that table for three? That's an oddball thing. Which one? Yeah. Elias? Elias? What it, would you, you... You know, I want to point out right now, this is not me and my phone. I'm using my phone to look at the show notes right now. Yeah. Hold on. Carry on. What's this table for three? Elias... Jeff Jarrett and Road Dog. That is a is is Elias in the middle seat, the one that's kind of moderating things. No, okay, he's he's on the side. So uh, who's the one in the middle seat? Jeff Jarrett. That's weird. He's not really moderating it. I don't, I think I think you overestimate the moderation seat. I don't think that's really a moderation. Well, that's kind of how it, it was once. Okay, with Michael Hayes. Um, no, but he says in the thing I saw like a they showed like a brief clip of it, and uh, Elias says that he. Got his. He was a big Clapton fan when he was in his teens. All right. And his dad got him a guitar, and he self-taught. But he's been playing guitar ever since he was 15 years old. Oh, that old. sounds like my story. Right, but I think he's been doing it continually a lot, and that's why he's really good. I was pretty good at one point until I stopped playing. I don't think you were Elias good though. I think, I think I'm not going to criticize. Was pretty, probably pretty close. It's like me saying I might be as good as Jerry Lawler in art. Jerry Lawler could be this this generation's Norman Rockwell. Yeah, he's really good. That's legitimate. It's crazy how good Jerry Lawler is at the art skills. Mm-hmm. Like, it's I'm not even overhyping it. No, he's really good. He's really good. He's really good. He's like Rockwell esque man. Anyways, uh, what are we talking about? Um, you're still talking about Sami Zayn, I think. Oh, yeah, dude, come on. He's, I guarantee he's way happier now than he was before the Hell in a Cell with uh, Kevin Owens and uh, Shane McMahon. Way happier. He was, like, he was on the verge no, of being a main point, event guy. At that point, he was doing nothing, but then they paired him back up with Kevin Owens, and he had a, the A story on SmackDown for months. I know. Yeah, he was happier then, but I don't know about going into a program where he's ultimately going to lose to Lashley. It's good for Lashley because they finally get a program. I'm saying he's happier now than he was before they turned him heel. Yeah, I, I won't dispute they weren't that. Doing anything I'm not disputing that. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just just bummed out that he's in yet another program where he's going to lose. Would you rather see this or that stuff with him and Kevin Owens and Shane McMahon? No, I don't want to see that either. That stuff was terrible. But let's wait and see what we get next week before saying. Well, he's well, a heel, man. See. Of course the heel's going to lose. Unless you're Roman Reigns. He's a heel who always wins. Alexa Bliss versus Mickey James versus Bailey. This was the main the bank qualifier. And this went down pretty much exactly how we thought. Uh, there was some yeah. good teamwork to start the match between Mickey James and Alexa Bliss. Ultimately, they turned on each other because they want a chance to get that briefcase. Mm-hmm. Um, Alexa hit. Uh, I like that stuff. I like that. It's good character stuff. Yes. Right there. Uh, DDT pins Bailey. She advances to the main the bank uh, ladder match at Money in the Bank. Mm-hmm. So far, uh, both men's and women's match just loaded with talent. That's right. Piggy Carnage mentions here in chat, Terry Crews does really oh, good yeah. paintings and sketches. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he's, he's really, really good, too. good. Is there anything Terry Crews can't do? I don't think so. No. No. The answer is no. Yeah, he can do everything. Spoiler alert. He can do everything. Anyways, Bailey ate the pin. I know. But Alexa Bliss is a pretty big star. Yeah. I mean, she just was Raw Women's Champion. So weird. It's weird that she Bailey ate the pin and yet Sasha wasn't involved in some capacity. Like I thought maybe Sasha would come out because Bailey was, you know, get double teamed by Alexa and Mickey to advance that storyline, but it didn't happen. I'm telling you, man, they care so much less about Bailey Sasha than we do. Oh, I know. You know what I mean? I know. Like that's just that's not even close. Anyways, next up we've got uh Jinder Mahal in the training room. Yeah. Um, and he's like uh Kurt saying you know, we gotta we gotta go over this match right here. Yeah, yeah, we gotta have this triple threat match. We need to have this money in the bank qualifier. Uh, Ginger says, "Okay." He gets up, he leaves the trainer's room, and immediately gets speared through a fake wall by Roman Reigns. <laughs> they set up a piece of drywall in what would or otherwise be a, a corridor to a hallway. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because there's just a broken in half piece of drywall on the ground. 
there was no drywall left on the actual wall. Right. And then there's like a literal hallway. Yeah, there's a hallway. With like a sign that says, there's like, there's like a directional sign that says this room, this room, this room, go this way. But also there's like and it would be or pipes along the ceiling and stuff like that. And it would be, from the it would room. be pointing towards the wall that was there. Oh, that was funny. Hey, it was a rad. It was a rad spot, though. It was cool. Yeah, it was, it was kind of out of nowhere. It was out of nowhere. Spear out of nowhere. Yeah, exactly. I want to see more of that. I want to see more spears. That'll get Roman over. Spears out of nowhere. Spears out of nowhere through walls that weren't there before. That's what I want. Spears out of nowhere through walls that aren't there. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I want to see. Um, anyways, uh, the underdog hero Jinder Mahal continued to get tortured uh, uh, by the the vicious. By the vicious villain. heel vi- villain that everybody rightfully boos, Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns. Exactly. Um, back from commercial, we get Kurt Angle checking on Jinder Mahal, who's still selling the effects of that injury, and, and Kurt determines Jinder's in no shape to compete. Yeah, no, man. He just got speared through a wall out through of nowhere. a fake wall. Uh, next. It uh, felt, the wall felt very real, though. It did at the moment of impact, but once you investigated the scene and looked at what actually was <laughs> happening... You realize there was no wall there. Tell that to Jinder's poor ribs and all that rib tape on there. Yeah. Next, Finn Balor and Braun Strowman, an odd tag team, took on Dolph and Drew. Mm. Um, <laughs> towards the end, Braun shoulder tackles Drew. Drew sells it and accidentally kicks over uh, uh, Braun Strowman's greatest Royal Rumble trophy and it breaks it. Do you think that was planned? The, the the trophy being broken was planned? Oh, I don't think so. Really? I'd be surprised. So uh, Because there's a lot more dramatic way of doing that. I was reading about this. Uh, uh, Melter and Alvarez were talking about that on the radio this morning or last yeah, night or whenever yeah. they do their show. And uh, and Melter was saying Melter was saying that uh, I guess Braun, he felt that, that was, it was a bit of a, he said Braun used his, the, the wrong shoulder, like the oh, shoulder yeah, he wasn't that. supposed yeah, to yeah. use or something like that. Um, I don't know. I, I hate number one. I hate trophies. I think they're stupid. Not like, you know, hey, if you win something, great. But like, I don't know. It was so silly. Like, the, I'm really glad they didn't bring out that silly belt that they had for the greatest rumble. But they brought out that trophy. Why? Was, I mean, I don't know. I kind of feel like the, the, the spot was planned that way because why else would they have brought out the trophy? I don't know. I mean, the trophy was just silly. I know. And so I, don't know. I kind of figure, but it was a really... Awkward spot. Yeah, I'll put it gonna, that way. If you're gonna break it, there's a lot more dramatic way of doing it. Like yeah, actually I, putting someone physically through the. Yeah, trophy. I kind of agree with that too, but I'm like, why else would it be out there? Uh, so I think it's been out. Hasn't it been out there every week since? Probably? Oh, has it actually I been out there? So. Okay. Well, so yeah. like with the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal for the first month or so after you win the the match, maybe the trophy, trophy was supposed out. to be more involved in that spot in terms of it being broken. Like maybe Drew was supposed to be closer to the trophy and he was supposed to go into it or something like that. Which seems dangerous, mm-hmm. but they were, they needed a way to get Braun out of that match, so I figured. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, I understand that. But yeah, no, it looked like it hurt for everybody. Yeah, it did. I was actually kind of worried for so Drew. So that spot when it served as a distraction, so uh, Dolph can knock Finn off the top rope and kind of roll him up a little bit, and pick up the win. Yeah. So we can get a Dolph Finn Balor program now. Oh God, I hope not. But a Dol- uh, but a Drew Finn Balor program. Yes, <sighs> please. Oh man, yes, absolutely. Yes, please. But I want. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they'll just sort of. And they were also kind of teasing Drew versus Braun, which would be great. That's one I'd love to see. I wonder if they're going to do. I wonder if they're just going to do sort of these four guys going at it, you know, in various Drew and Finn, Drew and uh, Braun, and yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. That could be fun. I love both. I love all four of these guys. <laughs> Alex Foster much. reminds me of the spot where we come back from commercial break. Finn's uh, like looking over, or you know, Dolph's on the mat. Finn's standing over him. Um, Braun tags himself in, gets in the match, and body slams Finn on top of Dolph. Mm-hmm. And then he screams at Finn, get up, you're fine. <laughs> and after Finn stares at him, like, it's like what are you doing? <laughs> and so Finn gets up, and they both do the broad pose. That's fine. That's great. But that was great. Thanks for, thank you for reminding me. Yeah. Alex Foster. That was a funny spot. Uh, <laughs> get up, you're fine. Get up, you're fine. People, people love Braun so much, man. They love him so much. <laughs> when freaking Drew is in there, like chomping it, yelling at Braun, and Braun just screams, "You're gonna get these hands!" <laughs> oh Braun's man! Uh, uh, next, Kurt Angle's backstage on the phone with on Stephanie. his phone again. He's always on his phone. And he says, "You know, I found a very talented performer to take Ginger's spot in this Money in the Bank qualifier." And Steph cuts him off. Yeah, says, who's that supposed to be? 
Who do you think that was supposed to be in the first place? Kayfabe, of course, it's kayfabe. Very talented person. Probably Jason Jordan. Could be. Was he already in a qualifier? No. It would have been Jason Jordan. Is it no, no, I'm sorry. Not, uh, the other guy. Chad uh, Gable. Chad Gable. Thank oh, maybe. you. Yeah. It would have been Chad Gable. Um, but anyways, no, it's, it ended up being Kevin Owens. Yeah. Because Elias comes out, but stars promo. He is interrupted by Kevin Owens. Kevin music. Owens. Because Kurt says, well, I know he was going to call you, but. So, I mean, right there we knew who it was. Yeah, exactly. So, for our, our main event of the evening and the last, I believe, main in the bank qualifier for Raw, Elias versus Kevin Owens versus Bobby Lashley. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a great spot where mid-match, Elias has the upper hand. He calls JoJo to bring his guitar and a microphone over, tries to perform, gets interrupted by Owens again. The thing that I liked about that is that he recovered from his, from his you know, proposed set to counter a Kevin Owens like attack. Uh, that was great. Man, you were all over the place today, that phone. Um, so anyways, no, this was fun. Uh, let's see here. How did this finish go down? Owens pinned Elias after the frog splash. Lashley hit a dominator on Elias. Sammy pulls Bobby. Oh, that's right. Sammy's yeah, even yeah, got yeah. involved with that. Yeah, because Lashley hit his finish on Elias. Sammy came in kind of sort of out of nowhere, pulled him off, uh, gave him a halluva kick. That was kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, I like that. I, I like the Sami Zayn, Bobby Lashley. Thing. No, I, I think, think it's going to go good. interesting places. Uh, you know, I, 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 I want great stuff for Sami Zayn. If I it's going to be really a good. train wreck, I'd rather have a train wreck with Sami Zayn than anybody else. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he'll still find ways to make it entertaining. It's kind of what he does. Um, but anyways, Kevin Owens hit a frog splash. Uh, he had a really red face when he did that, too. I remember seeing that replay. His face was really red. Uh, I think he Elias. twisted his ankle during the match because he was limping around a little bit. Oh, did he? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, yeah, Kevin Owens now in Money in the Bank. That's great. I do. I, I, I appreciate that that sort of, you know, Kevin Owens. We got double duty for Kevin Owens last night. So that's awesome. Yeah. You know, and two really involved matches. It wasn't mm-hmm. like he had mm-hmm. to, you know, he can go to sleep in either of them. Um, so, no, I don't know. I thought Raw was like, like now that, you know, especially after we're done talking about it. Oh, and on top of that, we had Booker T last night. Yeah. That was awesome. That was fantastic. I try not to take him for granted when I get some Booker T these days. Oh, I know. He's you know, so good. He is so good. Um, let's answer some questions. What do you say? Uh, I say yes. All right. Good. Fat bastard champ Alex Foster. Outside of a wrestling ring, what would be the worst time to cash in the Money in the Bank briefcase? If someone's taking a dump, I'd, I'm staying away. I don't know, man. If someone's taking a dump, that seems like a good time to I cash I would think in. that's the best time to cash yeah. in. That's exactly when you want to do it. Yeah. Look, man. You know, wrestling, bit it's a dirty business. Yeah. You got to take advantage when opportunity presents itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nemo, this might get some flack, but why does everyone hate on the idea of 50-50 booking? To me, the idea that anybody could win any time would make things more exciting. I don't think it's an idea or the problem so much with 50-50 booking is that you got to make the storylines interesting to motivate the wins and losses. Yeah. Just ha- people having just trading wins without really any storyline advancement or any interesting storylines just makes it seem like everyone's on you got to have people you got to have people that are that are on win streaks people on losing streaks cuz those in and of themselves create storylines and you know one of the the criticisms of, of of gender when he won the WWE title or putting the title on him was that he he didn't win beforehand mm-hmm. and so some people didn't view him as a legitimate champion per yeah. se because you know right before that he was losing a lot of matches mm-hmm. and the same thing could happen to a slightly lesser extent if someone is has like a 500 record and then kind of out of nowhere save for a money in the bank uh, cash in wins a world title there's no momentum behind that mm-hmm. one. yeah no I'm with you on that one so long as it's like in the attitude era I mean there's storylines and they were you, they were treading the belt but it was all to advance storylines and it was interesting yeah, for the most part and what, what you're saying is essentially true I mean there were some guys back then like well basically just stone cold Stone Cold and The Rock, to a degree, were basically unbeatable. Like, Stone Cold, in terms of power rankings, you knew that Stone Cold was, like, the guy, and you, he could never be beat. Um, but, yeah, no, everybody else is kind of, like, around the same power rankings as everybody else. And, and yeah, there was a lot of 50-50 booking back then, but like you said, the stories were really great. Mm-hmm. And so I think people focus on, you know, the idea of wins and losses versus, you know, what it should be about, and that's, like you said, story. So, mm-hmm. yeah, no, I, I agree with you completely. Um, Barry, what current tag team or faction under other than the Undisputed Era would you turn into an eight man faction? Sanity. So many people. Yeah, eight's a bit much, but five. Who would you include in Sanity? 
I think Lars Sullivan would be a great addition yeah, to Sanity because he's a addition. weirdo. Yeah, it's a good addition. In the women's division, is there anybody else that feels like a Sanity addition? I mean, Nikki Cross is so singular, but is there anybody who's a little on the weird side? Ooh, what if uh, Dakota Kai's thing with Shayna Baszler just sends her so far down oh, the hole that she ends up in Sanity? Yeah, that'd be good. Um other eight man factions though. Like I couldn't see that with the new day. No. It feels like no way Jose has an eight man faction now. Yeah. It's just his conga line. <laughs> uh Friendo Club Hunter Rook. Uh given Seth's recent performances at the beginning of pay per views and main events on Raw, is he the closest thing to the modern day Shawn Michaels? And if not, who would you compare him to from a wrestler from the past? What a great... That's a good analogy, Rollins and HBK, because HBK gave his all every match, and you could tell Rollins is doing the exact same. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. I think it's actually a really good analogy, although Seth Rollins seems like he has a better head on his shoulders. Like, HBK even, you know, by his own admission, was mm-hmm. a mess a lot mm-hmm. of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I think that's a good, that's a good comparison. Um, George Calloway, which two unexpected wrestlers have the potential to put on a five-star match at given the time and good creative direction? Wow, two unexpected wrestlers, huh? I like this answer here. Who is this, 97% Tommy, 3%? Percent cat, Tommy Cat, Tyler oh, Tommy Breeze, cat. and Hideo Itami. Yeah, I've always heard Hideo Itami. I've never seen any of his Noah matches from back in the day. Um, who do we know or who... I don't think we're ever going to see that out of Bobby Roode, but given his TNA work, which I've seen some of, I think he probably could. What about Bob Roode versus Drew McIntyre? Yeah. Yeah. Their takeover match was good. Um, yeah, it was. Hmm. Uh, oh, great question. Original caffeinator. What change do you think would benefit Roman Reigns the most? And you can't just you can't you have to choose one of these. You can't say yeah. story because yeah. that's the obvious one. Yeah. New attire, new entrance music, or a new finisher slash signature move. I'm gonna go with the move. Me too. I was thinking that too because, dude, the spear and the Superman punch stuff. It's so especially the Superman punch. It feels so lazy. It is the laziest move. It never looks like that's the my, that's one of my biggest problems with them is that it never looks legitimate. Yeah. Uh, Star of Inc. With what we know backstage about Roman Reigns being a leader and well-respected, if Roman ever left WWE, WWE for another promotion for another like promotion. Ring of Honor. Yeah. Um, would fans poo-poo him or embrace him? Well, I mean, if Ring of Honor brought him in as a heel, I think smartly, then the fans would boo him, and it'll be, he'd at least be given a clean slate. Yeah, I think I think you're right about that. I think off off the bat, they'd probably boo the crap out of him because that's what they sort of know to do with mm-hmm. him. But I think, dude, I honestly think, <laughs> and, like, here's the thing: WWE does plenty of stuff that I find very enjoyable and very entertaining. They do plenty of stuff that I like. Roman Reigns is, is in my opinion, the biggest creative blunder since the invasion angle turning Austin heel one of those things you know like the the potential that they had there with Roman Reigns versus what they've done with him and how they've done it has been mind-blowing it's been baffling I honestly do not understand it because it seems pretty easy yeah um 97 percent Tommy three percent cat do you think if they give Rousey the title at Money in the Bank this is telegraphing Brock losing at SummerSlam Replacing one marquee star with the other. So I'm Thanks, never going to bet against Brock again. However, and I don't even know if they think about it that way, but I can I, I guarantee you they don't think about it that way. <laughs> but I could see somebody with some amount of, of savvy thinking about it that way, you know? Yeah, like yeah, it's, yeah. It, it would be smart. Oh, yeah, it would be. Hey, this is one of our marquee champions because, you know, put the title on somebody looked great. Um, so, yeah, but I don't know if they think about that stuff yeah, or so. in much of anything. Broken Ambulance, would you rather see a woman's tag title or a woman's mid-card title? For me, it would be women's tag titles. 
Yeah, I like tag title. I, I think tag title would be would make the most sense. Uh, let's see here. Um, Rory Grace, um, he just had a premonition. A premonition. Premonition. The B team loses to Wyatt and Hardy become woken. What do you think, friendos? Look, man, I honestly just want them to admit to to do the Bray Wyatt, Bo Wyatt thing. That's what I want them to do. Yeah. But I really like this B team. Um, Curtis Axel reminded me a bit of uh, Will Ferrell last night. Some of his reactions are so dopey. And then oh, the yeah, interview yeah, afterwards, yeah. It, so, it felt so much like semi-pro. It was great. Uh, bronze grappling hook. What superstars would make the best public school teachers and what subject would they teach? Tommy Catch said Shinsuke English. <laughs> oh, public school teacher. Scott Steiner teaches math. <laughs> That's good. Uh, Some of these are like better than the gold dust film studies. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's real good. Um, Elias would be a music teacher. Perfect. Yeah, yeah there you yeah. go. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Lawler, art teacher. There you go. JBL economics. Oh, that's a good one. Look at that. That's good. Um, John Cena, maybe he could teach etiquette. <laughs> yeah, etiquette. It was like the 1950s. That's great. Baron um, Corbin uh, could do the, the brain stuff. Some uh, 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 physiology? Bro, or you want to do a philosophy? <laughs> he could be a philosophy teacher. <laughs> Baron Corbin, a philosophy teacher. What makes me me? What makes me me? I'm I am not me, therefore me. I am me. <laughs> yeah. I bleed, therefore I'm me. Who, uh, who would be a good math teacher? Scott Steiner. Oh, you already said that. That's right. Yeah. What about science? Um, oh, uh, Xavier Woods. I think he has a PhD in psychology. Oh, there you so go. So he'd be a, 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 a psychology teacher. Mm -hmm. or, or a psych teacher or like the, the school counselor. Yeah. Um, a good science teacher. I feel like there's a science joke in there. There's like a science joke somewhere. I don't know. Uh, oh, uh, Bludgeon Brothers can teach history. Okay, explain that one. They carry around those, those huge hammers. They're kind of, uh, the gimmick's kind of medieval. Kind based. of medieval. Okay, I like that. Who's the, I don't have the full name here, the going in raw Wolfpack predictions keeper. Is that uh, Cody? Who is that? Hold, please. Yeah. You got to find it. Uh, Cody Miles. Yeah. Cody Miles. That's what I thought it was. I didn't want to say it and be stupid. Uh, did Steve's heart break when the popcorn went flying? Look, man. My heart breaks whenever popcorn is wasted. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, Richard Nason. Um, Sammy Zayn has confirmed he <laughs> listens to Going In Raw, mentioned that Bobby Lashley looked like a million bucks. A favorite quote of Stephen Larson. What patron level do you believe he is? Uh, he started out at 20 so he's got to that get friendo the friendo care package. Care package. Yes. And then now he's at five, and he is secretly Ivan Avendano. That's his fake name. Um, dangerous sociopath, no way, Jose. Everyone talks about Braun being the guy who should dethrone Brock, but week after week, Seth Rollins' stock only continues to rise. True. Yeah. He got a massive pop last night. What do you think about Seth possibly beating Brock and becoming the guy instead of Braun? I would love. I would love the role. I, I still think it'd have been a fantastic idea to have Seth challenge Brock mm -hmm. at SummerSlam. Roman having won Money in the Bank mm -hmm. cashes in, and I mean, talk about and on a like an honest to god heel turn. Oh yeah, because people would be booing the living crap out of that, and man. It would be great. Wow, that's an interesting question. Boo, 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 bum, bum. Since you answered the question of who's more passionate about wrestling on that chat, here's a similar question. Who would win in a shoot fight, Vince McMahon or Dave Meltzer? Okay, well, today it would be Dave Meltzer. Yeah. Vince is huge, super old. Yeah. But 20 years ago? Maybe Vince. Maybe Vince. I don't know what kind of fighting experience... Yeah, so this either. person says Dave is younger and is jacked, but has less fighting experience. 
Does Vince have l- actual fighting experience I mean, or stage pro wrestling fighting experience? Doesn't really count as real fighting. Experience. It really doesn't. Case in point, CM Punk. Yes. Uh, bronze grappling hook. Okay, so is this like a thing? Uh, he says an up, up, down, down. Tyler Breeze and Xavier Woods are battling each other in GM mode on an older WWE game. Could you guys start a series similar to that where you battle for attendance numbers and money earned based on your booking? One of you gets SmackDown, one of you gets Raw. Hmm. Is if that what game are they playing? I'd like to know that, and that would be kind of a fun thing to that would to be a string. fun thing to do. <clears throat> uh, John Thompson. Uh, do you think they're keeping the Universal Championship on Brock because he'll soon break CM Punk's record? Do you think that's a thing? If it is, it's. I think it's further down the list of yeah, priorities. I, yeah, it, that's exactly what I was going to say. I, I feel th- like I it's think really they're low. pushing on him dropping the belt to either. They're figuring out the Roman the thing. Roman thing or deciding whether they're going to jump ship on that entirely. Yeah, I agree with that. One more question, then we'll do a play per view. Uh, Lindsay DX HBK. Power rank the top five entrance songs you'd like to hear Baron Corbin do the lyrics for. Number one for Lindsay is HBK's theme. You know, I, I wouldn't think I'm cute. I think I'm cute. I know I'm sexy. I'm not me. I drive me crazy. Wild. Um, that's one thing about Baron is that I feel like his music, need, they need to get rid of the chanting. Mm-hmm. Get rid of the intro after the chanting. Yeah. <laughs> they have, the song has two intros. And get right to the guy singing. Yeah. Because then it's not terrible. I want him to do Alistair Black's theme. Oh, my God. Or Glorious. How about Glorious? Glorious. I will defend. I will defend. Till I'm victorious? Till I'm victorious? Hey. Hey. Bullet Club is for you, but it's like my version of it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what play per view are we doing? What are we doing? Money um, in the bank? Yeah, we've been doing Money in the Bank. So. Really? Or money we did last time. Money in the bank. I remember the last one I did, is though. Is for real. Let's do an episode of WCW Thunder. All right. Thunder episode. Uh, let's see here. Where do you find results? Just search. It's just search. Results. Uh, oh, let's see here. Man, my stomach is yeah, mine's rumbling. Pretty, I'm pretty hungry, too. Oh, my goodness. They know, right? See? WCW Thunder. I'm going to look up uh, May 2000. May 24th, 2000. All right, I'll take January 8th, 1998. No, I'm sorry. January 16th, 1998. Wait, what the? Wow. I'll go a couple episodes in. When did Thunder start? Thunder started in 98. I thought so too. Here, I'll go first. It's so weird. Um, Wow, that's a short match. Hold on a second. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have seven. Oh, okay. So I was like at the bottom. Yeah, well, that's fine. You have seven matches. All right. I'm gonna. It's like the fourth episode. You have seven. One, Hold two, on, three, recount, four, recount five, six, seven, eight. I have eight. I have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, I was trying to find a different one. That one had six. There's some good ones on there, though. <laughs> or some interesting ones, I should say. Let me see how much this one has. You have eight, you say? I have eight. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I have nine. I'll skip one. Then. Okay. Now, I'm going to give you this hint. <clears throat> there are eight matches. Three of them are DQs. All right. Uh, first, singles match. Conan versus Scott Steiner. DQ. 
Um, yeah, but somebody actually won. It's not. They're not like. De- oh, oh, like neither. Uh, none of them. There, there, there are winners in these. Okay. Okay. Uh, Conan via DQ. Uh, Steiner v- via Damn. DQ. Um, Terry Funk versus Harlem Heat 2000 <laughs> in a two-on-one handicap match for the WCW Hardcore Championship. Who came in as champion? Terry Funk. Was Harlem Heat 2000 Stevie Ray and Ahmed Johnson? Oh, I don't. It's Big T. Yeah, I think okay, it's Ahmed okay. Johnson. I can't remember his name was in WCW. I'll stick with Terry Funk. Yeah, that's okay. good, good call. <laughs> in a tag team match, Chavo Guerrero Jr. and Super Calo versus La Parca and Silver King. I'll go with Chavo's team. Very good. <clears throat> um, Lash LaRue versus Sean Stasiak. Oh, God. I'll say Stasiak won. Yeah. All right. He was a big dude. Singles match. Marty Jannetty versus Dean Malenko. I hope Dean won that match. <laughs> Your hope is, is, is proven out. Uh, Rhonda Singh <laughs> versus Elizabeth. I'll say Elizabeth. Yeah. Okay. Uh, singles match. Kendall Wyndham. Versus a guy named Bill Goldberg. Goldberg. Yeah, Goldberg. Um, <clears throat> Chuck Palumbo versus Terry Funk for the WCW Hardcore Championship. I'll say Palumbo won that. Nope, Terry Funk God, retained. man. Singles match. Uh, Eddie versus Ray. Oh, wow. Yeah. What year was this? 98, January 98. I'll say Ray. Ray won. It was by DQ, but Ray won. All right. Um, uh, Next, Horace Hogan versus Billy Kidman in a Horace will be fired if he loses match. I'm going to say Horace got fired. He lost. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Of course, they do that on a thunder. Yep. (laughs) A singles match. Uh, Chris Jericho versus Chris Benoit. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I'll go with Benoit. Yeah. Uh, next, Arn Anderson mm. versus David Flair. I'll say David Flair won that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in a singles match, Saturn versus Rick Martel. Oh, Saturn. No, Rick oh, Martel wow. somehow won. Wow. That was Flock Saturn, too. Wow. Next. It wasn't even a DQ. Wow. Next, Rick Steiner and Tank Abbott versus Chronic. I'll say uh, Chronic one. I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that one of these matches ended in no contest. I didn't notice it until right now. <laughs> and this was the match, no contest. Well, I got five. Well, there's one more on here. Oh, okay. Do you have, are you all out? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, one last match. Uh, hey, yo. Hey, yo. Scott Hall versus, well, it's the Giant. It's 98? Yeah, January so 98. three matches ended in DQ. So this ended in DQ. Good. Giant wins by DQ. <laughs> Very good. Six for me. Very good. Final match. Sting versus Mike Awesome in an ambulance match. They weren't pushing Mike Awesome, I don't think. I'll say Sting. No, Mike oh, Awesome beat Sting God. in three minutes and 15 seconds. Oh, jeez. I, I shouldn't be surprised. Shouldn't be Whatever sounds good, do the opposite I of. Got six. Well done. Anyways, that's it for show. Yeah. Let's see here. Oh, let me do this real quick. All right, Hilton. Hey, dude, Hilton, can you hit the music, Man, please? He's asleep. You're going to have to do it yourself. No, nah, he hit the button. He's good. Anyways, thanks, Hilton. Go back to sleep now. Anyways, that's it for show. Thanks so much for tuning in. Leave a comment below or something. Until next time, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.